We're doing it. We're really doing it. 231, 232. I can see the finish line here. Let's do it. 231 is another one of these two quantitative variable least squared regression line questions. Two quantitative variable least squared regression line questions. So this is the information we need. If I have to do um, a confidence interval or a stat test about that, this is the standard error, the standard deviation of the slope. So I'm going to set this one up just like I did the last time. Y hat is equal to A plus BX, which means whatever I'm trying to predict, here I'm trying to predict the concentration of zinc. in parts per million, and A is 16.3, and B is 19, and X is this word right here, the lead in parts per million. So if I know the lead in parts per million, then I can predict, I just have to multiply my 19 and then add by 16.3 in order to predict the concentration of zinc. So let's see what they're asking of me. It says, which of the following statements is correct? when we're talking about this value. So I think that they want us to figure out that like, oh, that, that's my slope. And so just a quick review on slope. Slope is our old friend rise over run. And that is just how much did the y value change over how much did the x value change. And in slope, ultimately that number 19 means 19 and y here is our uh, concentration of zinc. So the zinc concentration goes up by 19 for every one part per million of, and that's our X, lead part per million. So if the lead goes up one, zinc goes up 19. If lead goes up 2, zinc goes up 38. You get the point. So now we're just looking for the sentence that matches it the most. And let's see. I like this for every. So let's make sure. It says, on average, the predicted increase goes up. It looks like these two are almost exactly the same. Oops. But see this word zinc and lead. So let's clue in on that. Uh, for each increase of 19 zinc... Uh, for every one of lead, that is exactly what we got. That's B is definitely our answer. Now let's go to 232. Turn the page here quickly. The question states there were 5,317 previously owned homes sold in the city in the year 2000. The distribution of sale prices of these homes was strongly skewed right. So it looks something like that. We know that home sales are almost always skewed right because incomes are skewed right. There, most people make a good living and then some people make a whole lot. These are the managers and the people that are in charge of the rest of us. Now it states, if you knew that the mean was this, and you knew the standard deviation was that. If all possible simple random samples of the size 100. And so they're trying to decide if you understand what a sampling. This is the regular population distribution. And the sampling distribution, that would mean I took a random sample of 100 of these dots and I averaged them together and made a dot over here in my sampling distribution. And I did it again. N is 100 and I took 100 dots out of this and I averaged them all together and I made another dot. And then I did it again, took 100 dots from my population, averaged them all together, made another dot over here on my sampling distribution. 
we know, even if the data is skewed, right around or as close as we get, the closer we get to n is equal to 30, and definitely when we exceed 30, we know that our sampling distribution, even if it's skewed, little by little, the closer we get to 30, it turns into something that is approximately normal. And so I'm going to eliminate D and E. And then also we come to find out that we should anticipate the mean to be exactly the same. So the mean of the skewed data should match the mean of my sample, and that should make sense logically. So this is okay. Again, we've eliminated these two. And now we're trying to find out, well, what would be the standard deviation? Well, notice how this is much squishier because it's the average of the averages. And so whenever we take the average of the average, there's not a lot of variability with that. So let's figure this out. The standard deviation of the population and looking on my formula sheet, notice this is a sample means question. So the standard deviation of my statistic is sigma over the square root of n. And here we were told sigma is this. So the standard deviation of my sampling distribution would be this over the square root of n. So 37881 over the square root, they wanted me to have n100. So the square root of 100 is 10. So ultimately, they're asking you to take 37,881 and divide it by 10, which would be this. And I'm going to pick A for my final answer. Thanks for joining us.